I think that we're reimagining the role of the Children's Museum uh, around the world right now. And I, I think about my colleagues um, across the United States, but also around the world who are doing incredible work serving different kinds of needs of, of communities in which they're based. Um, some children's museums have done wonderful things where they are um, partnering with food banks um, to just take away the stigma and shame of showing up at a food bank to have, collect food for their families. Children's museums have stepped in to be a, a location where parents can collect those services. Um, so children, some children's museums are doing food gardens and other kinds of uh, ways to, to actually grow food for communities. And then still other children's museums are doing really interesting partnerships like the Children's Museum of Tacoma, partnering with a local air, uh, military base and thinking about ways to bring children's museums into uh, different spaces. The Children's Museum of Chicago, I just read, is doing a really interesting partnership with a local hotel, hotel um, chain to really bring children's museum experiences in other ways into other shared spaces where families might be. So I think that we're really looking at incredible ways in which Children's museums, um, not just in South Africa, but around the world are stepping in to fill this space. I hear from children's museums really across the United States in which they become safe spaces, spaces where families can come and um, be seen, heard and valued and that their children can be seen, heard and valued in a different way um, than they would be maybe at the local school or other service centers. And I think that that's because we at children's museums as a whole really try to embed this idea of welcoming inclusion, a non-judgmental space for parents. So what you won't typically find at a children's museum is people giving very direct parenting advice or make or trying to use shame or humiliation for a parent to make them behave in a certain way. Instead, I find that what children's what, what I've been inspired with about children's museums around the world is that they're, they're spaces that model uh, new ways of thinking and being with your children and as educators and as parents. I feel like every time I go to a children's museum anywhere around the world, I always learn something as a parent and how I can, I can more creatively and playfully engage with my own child. And I believe that that's something that's really powerful about these spaces, that they are welcoming and inviting in, uh, to really serve the needs of the community around them. In our case, I think in South Africa, we're quite uniquely positioned for a couple of reasons. One is we lack the social safety nets that many, uh, children, that many um, other countries in the global north might have. And so our, uh, the role of a museum is, I think, naturally going to be a little different uh, because of the needs of the communities that, in which we work. And I think that drives a certain kind of entrepreneurialism and, and agility in terms of our um, quick response as well. Um, another thing that I think is really critical here is because we work with families um, who are oftentimes on the margins of our society, we try to model what it looks like to be a fully inclusive cultural institution. And as I mentioned, a lot of the families that we work with are migrants or refugees, um, children with disabilities, children who are um, underexposed to or, or not invited to um, uh, occupy more wealthy and privileged spaces in our society here in South Africa, places that have been historically through the law under apartheid denied to the majority of children. So by trying to use disruptive innovation to completely blow that apart and to say, what would a truly inclusive cultural institution look like for children uh, that would welcome all children, regardless of ability or background, that, that kind of defines who we are and what we're trying to do. And so therefore what we find is that the way the role that we play for a lot of families is that we're the friendliest institution that they know. You know, when they go into a hospital, they might get shouted at or asked to leave. When they go to a police station, uh, they might be um, given in messages that they're explicitly not welcome to file a claim or, or to report a crime. Um, when they go to a, a school, they might be told that your child is not welcome here because of their disability, their in inability to pay or their refugee status. So in what we're trying to do is try to completely disrupt that whole way of being and show, so show a different way of inclusion and to show people how they feel. So what we find in, in where we are based at Constitution Hill, which is in its own incredible museum, people come to us and say, you know, in this former prison, they say, this is the freest place my child's ever been, or I feel so safe here. And those are the kind, that's a kind of institution that we wanna create no matter where we are, whether we're at Constitution Hill, in a community center, on a rooftop, on the street corner, or in a flagship children's museum.